The shape alone should convince you the Sub 900 is a cool car and it only gets more cool when you turbocharge it, when you make it convertible and like this one, make it two-tone and add BBS style wheels. But before we're going to go for a drive, which we will, there are a few details that I want to run through. First, the design, because it's worth remembering that this dates back really to 1968 with the Saab 99 and it is the ultimate evolution of that car. That means we've got bigger bumpers and that does make it look a bit strong, dare say bulky, but actually some of the lines on this car give it an unusual elegance. Of course, it is the convertible as well. And interestingly, that means it's got unique body pressings and a very different uh, monocoque underneath. It's also been reinforced. Stronger A pillars, B pillars, side impact uh, bars in the doors and reinforced sills and all of that. All in all, it means it's got about 50 kilos on top of what it would normally standard. That's 1300 kilos in total. The convertible conversion also reduces your rear legroom and makes your boot a little bit smaller, but actually they're quite good. Now, one more thing I wanted to talk about was the engine, because that is an interesting piece. And this is the four cylinder that many Saab enthusiasts will be familiar with. It's uh, derived from that great Triumph engine of old, and uh, here it's in its, again, ultimate evolution. Double overhead cam, 16 valve, turbocharged, uh, slanted 45 degrees, of course, and we're up to nine to one compression ratio now as well. The interesting thing about this particular engine is that it has been upgraded to what they call T5 specification. That means out with the coils and plugs and rotor arm. Instead, we have a DI direct ignition, cassette and crank position sensor, sequential computer controlled injection. That means it's mappable. And this one indeed is making probably about 50 horsepower more than standard. That's 225 brake horsepower. And I imagine somewhere in the mid 200s of foot pounds of torque. So there's really only one thing to do now, isn't there? Let's go for a drive. So first impressions are of a comfortable, hard wearing leather seat. Not massively supportive though. Good driving position, it's a bit high. Do you feel like you'll sit on the car rather than in it? And well, with the convertible, wind in the hair, maybe a little bit too much wind, but it is a windy day today, so note that. Lovely, familiar, warbly exhaust note, classic Saab. What else is classic Saab? Well, direct, fairly heavy controls and a general sense of stability as you go down the road. Mechanical refinement is good as well, apart from maybe a slightly ponderous gear change. The engine is lovely and smooth, especially with the T5 suite. That kind of characteristic flat spot between one and two and a half thousand RPM. It's kind of vacant now. It's just pulls. Very nice. And you still have that characteristic engine over gearbox exhaust note, which we've mentioned. Now we're just in a little village now, so we're getting a sense of what the low speed ride quality is like and it's not great actually this is where the uh, the beginnings of that structure start to reveal itself it's it seems to be a lot of fidgets around the cabin and while well, those leather seats they start to creak um, yeah it's not ideal the suspension definitely it rides better out at speed where the long travel coils can really start to work it's not awful it's not something that's going to put you off but still it's not brilliant either and my left knee seems to want to turn the indicator off whenever i turn left which is not ideal 
good news. So we're back out onto a country road. So uh, we're about to overtake this Mitsubishi L200. So we'll have a little flex of the right foot in third gear. Right, we get our first taste of what this car is really about. We've got a motorbike behind us as well. Come on, mate, let me overtake first. <laughs> Here he goes. No, power delivery is smooth, as we said, and even flat on the floor over some fairly poor road surface. It's not squirreling all over the road. It puts it down quite well, which is impressive for you know, how much power it's making. And at those longer speeds, well, higher speeds rather, it does have a longer gait to its ride and, uh, well, it's just the consummate cruiser. At 70 miles an hour, it'll be doing just under 3,000 RPM. And, uh, well, I mean, the standard 900 would normally do 30 to the gallon. With the T5 suite, well, I can expect that to go even towards 40. Just as we're cruising through town here, you can hear the exhaust booming against the walls. It's a lovely sound, you know, even at 1500 RPM. It's just so characteristically sharp. A few comments on the dashboard. Well, the heater is pretty you know, in precise, but it's very effective. Um, I'm not sure what any of these things mean on the dash, um, but eventually they will get air through to you. Um, one thing to note is that it's got a comprehensive set of dials. We've got a voltmeter, oil pressure and temperature gauges down here at the bottom. And of course we've got the standard ones, including the APC turbo gauge, which is a lot of fun on the main instrument pack. And we've got electric windows as well down here, along with the electric roof operation. All fairly fancy for a car of this age. a few bends here so uh, let's see what she's like when you start putting your foot down a bit. Oh, properly scoots. There's loads of torque. The mid-range is really uh, really powerful. Brakes are decent. We've got uh, 280 mil and uh, 270 mil discs front and rear, vented at the front. No ABS in this car though interestingly. Unfortunately, the brake pedal is, uh, well, offers a decent amount of feel. Along with the steering and the throttle, decent, consistent response. We've got a F-Type in front of us, and it actually just says to me how much narrower this car is than new cars, and you do feel that on the road this uh, narrow B road here, it feels quite manoeuvrable. You have space to play around with. <laughs> he doesn't. Yeah, it pulls all the way to the uh, red line at about six. Peak power is at 5,500, I think, most specification cars. There's a little bit of turbo lag just there, about 3,000 RPM. There was a, a slight hesitation before you get the rush of power, but you're not waiting there for long. There's a bit of roll at the high speed corners, but generally the car does feel quite composed. As I say, always in contact with the road as it's long travel springs. The damping a little bit to be desired. It doesn't quite absorb all the minor bumps and yet 
you know, because of the structure, it fails to impart those very accurately to your seat back. Let's see if we get past this guy. There you go, right. Brakes are indeed good. Heel and towing is alright as well. Actually, the more I drive this car fast, the more, um, the more we're getting used to its rhythm. And it's a very smooth car to drive fast. Pushing on a bit, you do find that the front feels heavy, and indeed, its 1300 kilos is uh, spread quite a lot to the front, 60 40 in fact. But, as long as you're not too greedy with the throttle, it will be neutral mostly. What you need to do is set yourself up with the throttle through the corner, ease on the boost, be aware of it, and then <laughs> catapult yourself out. Oh. And the exhaust note gets better as the revs rise. Oh, it's fantastic fun. <laughs> Man, I could ride this wave of torque for the rest of the day. I really could. There you have it. A thoroughly fun car to drive. And it's just at that level of performance that's perfect for British B roads and the same, the right size as well, as I've said. Doesn't harm the, the uh, wallet too much on the fuel bills either. Then there's the fact that it's a four-seater. It's, it's a bit of a timeless design. Yeah, it's quite a unique proposition. There are a few cars that you might consider as an alternatives from the Germans, perhaps. But, as they say, nothing on Earth comes close to a Saab 900.